It's Tuesday, January 24th, 2012, and welcome to Rumor Has It. I'm Corrine Levy. And I'm Emily Dreyfus, and this is the show where we round up the week's hottest tech rumors, and then we bet on them to see who understands the rumor mill better. It's not me. uh, (laughs) Turns out it's not usually me. (laughs) But if you will take a look at the whiteboard of shame... Somebody's winning where it counts for once. For Yay! once. Let's, do we have a, do we have a, um, is there a, a sound a clapping a, for clapping? Yay! Yes. <laughs> so finally, because she felt sorry for me, Emily took two <laughs> sucker bets. Two of the easiest bets in the world. One was that Apple came out or they had their, um, uh, education event yeah. next week where they literally the <laughs> the invitation was like we are having an education event next week and then we bet on whether it would be about books <laughs> i know not. well we bet about whether or not it would have to do with the iBook software and i against everything in my heart that said of course it will be said Maybe not. I mean, the invitation said, (laughs) it basically said, (laughs) this is going to be about iBooks, like without actually saying that, because what else would it be about? And then Emily (laughs) was a gracious gentleman and was just like, I'm going to say no. That's not what it's about. But the thing is, what you guys are about to discover is that I am a very gracious winner and I am a very sore loser. Right. You should. I am. You're about to see me just sitting here stewing in my angry juices. uh, uh, gross. But you should hear. But then Emily's like, "Well, this is what I should do for Humiliation Day. I'll play a video game." And I'm like, <laughs> "Karine doesn't think that's embarrassing. Enough. I don't think that's embarrassing." But you guys haven't seen me play a video game. It's horrible. I am terrible at it. I die all the time. Right. But if we're videotaping you do that in the your own house, how is that embarrassing? We show it on the show. I walked around in a banana suit. <laughs> I mean, I can and- play it in public. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, you should go out in public and like pretend to be Mario or something and jump around. And, oh, maybe you know, yeah, I maybe challenge people. Like I'm like a hustler. I could challenge that's them to video game a little better. I think that's, that's, a, that's a little better. Like we'll go to the we video could go arcade. down to GameSpot. Yeah. Or, and I could be like, boys, yeah, or I'm to here to video- challenge you. See, I was, bam. I was thinking to a video arcade at like the movie theater where it's a bunch of 12-year-olds. <laughs> That's a good idea. And <laughs> you just come with a roll of quarters and be like, all right, who wants to play? And then just like pay, you know we could whatever just give them a quarter to I mean I, that's cool. that would be totally fine by me or we could go to the um bowling alley where they exactly. have the arcade and then they have the dance one, dance revolution and I kind of am okay at dance dance revolution I still look like a fool but I managed to pass levels but that's pretty embarrassing anyway just doing yeah. dance dance revolution in, <laughs> in public is kind of embarrassing and admitting that I kind of okay, like it okay so let's 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 tr- see that maybe on sunday we'll go to the video arcade All right. and, and uh Take care, take care of a little humiliation. There are lots of movies I want to see, too. So is it can... for next week? Is it next week is Humiliation Day or the week after? So next week is the last show of this month. Okay, so and it's... The... It's fine by me if we do it then. Like, okay, I don't we'll think see. we need to do it the 1st of February. It just depends on when we can get ourselves to a video arcade. If that's, in fact, what we decide to do. Okay, that, yeah. That if you guys have any better ideas for how you want me to embarrass myself, please oh, send them over. Loser. Who I don't want to do it, but I'll do it. <laughs> Somebody no. is a sore loser. I mean, I, I am such a sore loser that literally my family will not play Scrabble with me. <laughs> because I, I think I'm going to be okay about it. I'm like, it'll be fine. Even if I lose, it's no big deal. It's like just a game. I'm not going to take it to heart. Ain't no thing. And then the moment that someone in my family begins to win, I'm like my mind just shuts down. I get so angry. It's like I can't deal with it. I need to go to like rage therapy um, about losing. I one time was playing Scrabble and my friend at the time was always, always won every single time we played. And one time I could not handle it. We were at a coffee shop playing because that's what you did in college. <laughs> Aww. I started crying. <laughs> it's I lost, emotional. I it lost, really is. I wasn't even losing by that bad. And I, I was like, I <laughs> I can't do it. Well, and it, I think it's particularly difficult for us because we're, we're copy editors and writers. So I like, have a lousy vocabulary. People expect though, us though. to win. And then when we don't win, they gloat about it because they're like, oh, look at you, Emily. You're the writer and you didn't even know that key was a word. Duh. <laughs> because this is what I don't like about competitive Scrabble players. Can I just get this off my chest? Those two letter words that you just only know about because of Scrabble should be disallowed. Q-I. 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 I play that on Words with Friends it's all the time. It's ridiculous. I know. I don't like it. 
I agree. <laughs> I don't. I agree think we because should. I feel like if that should be allowed, then qua should be allowed yeah, too. Yeah, then know? let's just have proper names and ha- have quid. big nouns. Like yeah, and Latin and Spanish. I will have vosotros por favor. Okay. Okay. That's, that's Sorry. <laughs> All right. Shall we get to our first rumor? Yes, please. Let's, Sorry, let's, Scrabble. Let's, competitive let's... Scrabble players everywhere. I, I know. know. You love I'll it. I'll try not to cry next time I play you. <laughs> um, I'm losing really bad on words with friends with everybody I'm playing right now. So <laughs> you should play key more. Um, okay. Ready? See, si, you have the first rumor. The first rumor is could Instagram come to Windows Phone before it comes to Android? <gasps> what? Dun, dun, dun. So this rumor comes to us from our very, very best friend, Frontline, Andrew. Yay! We met him at CES. It was so fun. Was, we gave him a t-shirt. It was so nice the, to see him. He's in the chat room right now. Yeah, he's in the chat hey, room. Hey, Frontline, it was so great to have you there in the audience with us in he's Vegas. He's probably here to make sure I don't F up the rumor that he submitted to us. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, hmm, very interesting take on that. So anyway, so a source recently left the impression, I don't know what that means. So this, this story comes from fastcompany.com recently left the impression that the Windows phone team has possibly been working with the people from Instagram. Why would Instagram come to an OS with such a low market share? Because it's sexy. And I think that with Instagram... And it, it handles images so well. And the well. phones are really great, and Nokia has good you know, yeah. cameras. And um, under Windows Phone 7's new design approach, however, devices have to live up to a certain standard, and that works for in- Instagram as well, because all the phones that they use that they have their uh, oh, whatever app. app on has a good camera, and that is the iPhone. So, you yeah. know, and so... <laughs> <laughs> that is the solitary the, iPhone. The only <laughs> phone that they have their app on is the iPhone, which kind of flows with the windows phone thing you know it has a nice design the os is really sleek whatever. yeah um it's about usability not about customization exactly it, and not and, about power and, really and it's more about the hardware they don't want to deal with slow hardware and cheap cameras like they want to yeah. deal with high-end kind of stuff and unfortunately Which is why they'll never come to the ipad <laughs> Sorry. yeah exactly <laughs> so um also designing an app for windows phone 7 means instagram wouldn't be dealing with the fragmentation that comes with dozens of models of Android smartphones, yeah. which I think is true because then with an Android phone, you have a lot of crappy cameras, a lot of slow um, inside parts. And- yeah, and a lot of old, like I would, if and if Instagram came to Android, I would want it, but I'm running like the oldest version of Android that there is. Yeah, and, you, and it wouldn't be exactly. optimized for it. It wouldn't be optimized. The camera is only mediocre and, you know. It, and it has like a 10 blurry. second lag. Exactly. <laughs> and so I think Instagram is really, really wants to maintain a level of awesomeness. And yeah. to do that, they, they'll they have to, you know, stick with iPhone and maybe go to Windows. And not that. Android phones aren't good because they are and oh, the yeah. new ones are great and they're fast and whatever but you and know that story just came out that Android is like now the new developers uh OS of choice exactly but because they have a lot of low-end phones on the market mm-hmm. I think then it's hard to for Instagram to like pick and choose like it can't just go to the you know droid razor or whatever the yeah. newest phone it has to go to all of them um i mean unless they just say it's only compatible with like ice, ice cream, cream sandwich, sandwich which would be a way for them to only get on the top of the line phone i mean i think they will the do that phones. like a- instagram's gonna come to ice cream sandwich i think this rumor is just saying it'll come to windows phone oh, first absolutely i think so which means that google got burned because that <laughs> yeah. is saying something Big if time. If uh, the, those eight people over at Instagram, that's apparently their whole company. They're just like eight or nine people. They're like the eight or nine richest people. <laughs> the eight or nine <laughs> geniuses over there. They are really <laughs> killing it. And so they're like, you know what? I think we're going to go with the underdog here. and We're going to go to Windows next. Gosh. And so everybody involved in this rumor is really tight-lipped. Instagram CEO Kevin Systrom was like, I don't know. I don't want to say anything, which is super obvious because he doesn't want to really burn Google out loud yet. You know, no, he does, you so, don't want to mess with Google. You don't want to mess with said, Google. They're like the mob. Because, because then Google is going to come out with Instagram Plus and make you join it <laughs> if you want to have a Gmail account. And then buy Instagram <laughs> against Instagram's will. Yeah, and then buy it and buy BlackBerry <laughs> yeah. just for no reason <laughs> and then just be like well in order to use anything you have to use our version of instagram plus and yeah. circles also you have to have google plus yeah <laughs> in order to use any of this also use gmail <laughs> and download google chrome i mean they're yeah. like they're crazy oh, so god 
I got to say, Instagram has replaced my addiction for Words with Friends. I use it all the time, constantly, and I feel sorry for Android users that you don't have it yet. But how does it do the same thing as Words with Friends? It's, no, I mean, I'm addicted. It's an addiction. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, like, it's like the best parts of... Twitter and Facebook like combined like the pictures from Facebook yeah. and like little comments or whatever and hashtags yeah. and at replies or whatever from Twitter combined and you can upload to Twitter and Facebook from Instagram at the same, at the same time, time which is cool. I mean I gotta say I'm not generally that jealous of people who have iPhones like I don't as you guys know I don't care about Siri. I don't care about a lot of the things the iPhone has. I don't think its screen is as like prettier than mine. I love the screen on my phone but not being able to use Instagram makes me so sad. I mean, it's the apps. It really was like I had um, an Android phone. I had black. Well, I had a BlackBerry phone, and then I was like, okay, I need to get an Android because I'm so jealous of all these apps. And then I had Android, and I got all these like hipstamatic replacements that I like, like weren't. And I love yeah. hipstamatic. Yeah. And then finally, I got my iPhone. And I was like, that's it. Like I'm never gonna get another phone. And it's not because of the phone itself. I could care less. It's because of the apps. It and well, and I have hipstamatic or like not hipstamatic. I have the. It, the retro camera for Android because Hipstamatic is not for Android. And what's so annoying about it is that when I send the pictures from that app to Twitter, they show up as tiny thumbnails unless people are a mem like sign up for that app. Oh, and it's then it has like the, all that border and, all, yeah, and stuff. And it has like yeah. all these ads. And when we were at CES, I was tweeting like what I thought were semi artistic shots <laughs> of the back lot of CES. And I kept getting all these tweets from people being like, that looks like a tiny thumbnail. Could you please enlarge? You're doing something I, wrong. I have a couple apps that are a little bit better than that that aren't as mm. hipstamatic y, but that can, you can do some like old, old, old timey. Stuff. I need that. Cause yeah, like the cause actual think... camera sucks. I want to play with it, you know? Yeah, totally. And I, ha after getting Instagram, I don't even use hipstamatic. And the cool thing about Instagram is you can use hipstamatic and then upload the photo, you know, and not yeah, touch yeah. it. Oh, so oh. you can like, I mean, there's so all sorts of possibilities. So it's super cool. You can see what your friends are posting. It's like a stream of pictures, which is really fun. That's neat. Um, so we, I don't know. Th this would be. Uh, we did do a story on Android Atlas recently that they are working on it for Android. It just, I guess, Windows Phone is just going to beat them to the punch. Yeah. yeah. Which, in, I mean, which is. It's just a big snap. It, foo. Exactly. Yeah. A, yeah it's all snap. 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 Foo. Snap. <laughs> snap foo. So this would be a huge boon for Microsoft, which is my new favorite company because of the Xbox. <laughs> now I love <laughs> I just want to put that out there that I love Microsoft because of the Xbox 360 Aww. that I just got one minute ago. But the biggest, the biggest problem that people have with Windows Phone is that there aren't enough um, apps for it. And so if and there like, aren't enough phones running. Well, it. right. There aren't enough anything for it. Yeah. But if like one of the biggest apps goes to Windows Phone first, that's going to be a huge benefit. Well, so, you know, I need a new phone and I would go to Windows Phone in a second just because I don't want to be an iPhone user. and I never have wanted to be one if it had obviously it needs Pandora, which I think it already has. And need, I need Instagram the movies app from uh netflix from no not netflix but from rotten tomatoes where it's like you can oh, see what's uh, on and uh -huh. you can see what's um what their scores are and i need yelp and i need facebook and new york times and that's about it so and I then i'll go right and i think most of those are on i don't know i just I'm, i imagine I, they I, are I, I don't know what's on there if there's not a facebook or twitter one then that's ridiculous but yeah, i'm sure there is i'm sure there is too i don't know about the new york times one but i don't know i think like if you had an iPhone for just a month, you think I would love it. I think you I would, would never want. I think it's just the most like user friendly, easiest. If it if if you don't want to do very much with your phone, if you just want it to work, yes. <laughs> but I want it to work for phone calls. Is the 4S, it does? Is it good? Yeah, they're fine. All right, it's really fine. I think it was just. You I know. think it was like I got burned. I mean, you by, don't have AT and T. You no, have I, and I have Verizon, Verizon. But I had so many friends who had the iPhone on AT and T, and I could never hear what they were saying. Yeah. And then I would call them, and they and I called them like four times, and then they'd call me days later and say, "You never called me that day," and like their phone would literally not even register a missed yeah, I call. Think that, I think that was an AT and T thing, not an iPhone thing, because I've knock on wood never had a problem with my Verizon phone, except the other day when it just bricked for no reason, and then I had to like. <laughs> that doesn't Good. And then I was like, I don't know what to do. And I went to Jason Parker and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, let me read the deadpan and on so your face. I think there's pressed, an emergency. And I was like doing that thing where you press both, but whatever. And he did it and it worked. Oh, so he fixed my iPad once fine. too. Thanks, Jason. All um, right. Okay. Shall we get to the next rumor? Yes, please. Okie dokie. This one is a very new rumor. Actually, it's um, an old rumor combined with a new thing. 
The new thing is the iBooks 2, which was released last week. Apple, the thing that is making me lose this podcast. <laughs> that sucker bet. This month. Um, iBooks 2 was released by Apple, as you know, because they're trying to reinvent the textbook. And I have a lot of feelings about it because even though it seems really awesome, I think the semi hubris of assuming that American classrooms are going to be able to integrate iPads into every classroom when we're in such a budget crunch is a little bit ridiculous. So unless they get a really good deal from Apple, but Apple didn't announce any sort of education discount. So it's kind of ridiculous. Like I was expecting in that announcement that they would announce yeah, a like discount one, one iPad for every student kind of thing. Like the yeah, one laptop or like child. if you, if you are a public <clears throat> education system, you can get it at cost or something like that. They didn't say anything about that, which has led some people to believe that this gives extra fodder to the iPad 3 rumor, that that the iPad 3 will come in two configurations, a cheaper and a better version. And then the cheaper version would be what would be sent to schools to be integrated in the classroom. Okay. So that brings us to this rumor, which is that iBooks 2 code reveals HD images, possibly indicating that the iPad 3 will, in fact, have a retina display. Which we've talked about before. We've talked about I mean, it a we bunch talk about of times. It all the time. Yeah. So, but this is like actual, more mm-hmm. solid evidence. Evidence, exactly. And I mean, it it could just be an Easter egg. It could just be a, a red herring buried in the code. But what they found um, are images labeled within the code, the the supporting files of iBooks Two and iTunes U, labeled two x dot png. Um. And then when you look, when you compare those images, when you actually take them out of the code and look at the image, they are huge. And what the people over at um, Mac Rumors, Mac Rumors? Oh, no, 9 to 5 Mac um, said of them is that it seems as though they are the exact right size to support a device that would be 2048 by 1536 pixel resolution, which is way bigger than 1080p. Uh, which is the current HD. And so that is the retina display. Like that is what a retina a retina display of the size of an iPad would be. So it's kind of interesting. There's also what I think is sort of interesting about this rumor too is that it doesn't involve any unnamed sources or anything. <laughs> which for once. For once. It's just the <laughs> That's obsessive. Because it's because they didn't go through Digitimes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they could have. It's like money laundering. They should have sent this rumor through Digitimes yeah, and it would to have come back couple, clean. To get a couple <laughs> unnamed sources in there. Um, but actually, it was just the dudes over at 9to5Mac who are obsessed and who had found images like this in iOS 5 when it first came out and said, oh my God, this indicates that the iPhone 5 is going to come out and have this. And then at that time, this was like a year ago, Apple then responded to that and said that was just a rogue graphic designer yeah. thinking into the future. <laughs> well, and that's what they, images. Exactly, and that's what they say that they do, that in the code they all, they put like a million different things. And then the minute that a new OS or a new something comes out, a new program or a new app, that all these like crazy developer people who know how to read code go in there and like, I found this, yeah. 2X, JP, you know, yeah. JPEG. Oh my God, it's going to be a microwave. And yeah, and so <laughs> they find, you know, and, and Apple probably puts, like you said, a lot of red herrings in there. Yeah. Or they're just like, whatever, put it and see what the response is maybe yeah. or see if it's possible. And or... I mean, I think with the with the retina display in particular, there's so much around, surrounding that rumor to say that it's true. I mean, we've had reports from manufacturers in China who are working on it. And we've had specific reports from unnamed sources about the progress that they're making of getting it done and who's making it. And is it LG making it or is it going to be a sharp screen or what's going to, or how many cores of LEDs will it have? Like there's so many specific rumors. I think we are, going to have a retina display. I mean, yeah, and I think that that's uh, obvious. It's almost obvious. Yeah. Like, why wouldn't they, you know, if they have the, you know, the technology to do it, to have a thinner, whatever, or even a little bit thicker. Yeah, remember, whatever. that's one of the rumors, yeah. that it might be a little thicker. Remember but- the retina display? <laughs> Samsung's retina <laughs> Samsung. display. Somebody in the chat room just said, reminded me of that. That <laughs> yeah. was from Samsung. I was wondering, we need to go back and look at what Samsung released at CES to see if anything happened with the retina display. <laughs> <laughs> That was from like episode eight, I think. And we tried to sensationalize that headline by saying Samsung is releasing the Retuna display. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I don't know. I think that this means that it's going to have the iPad, that it's going to have the retina display in the iPad 3. I don't know what it says about whether or not there's going to be iPad mini or just a regular old iPad 3 that has everything. One commenter on this story wrote, 
If the iPad 3 has a retina display, a better camera, Siri, and quad core, it'll be the best tablet ever. Yeah, and I was like, like really? It already is. No, duh. And the thing is, yeah, it's already the best tablet ever without any right, of those he's things. He's like, and if they can drop it to 199 yeah, it's going to be unbeatable. Then it'll be unbeatable. You're like, it's already <laughs> it unbeatable. It already actually, is. And, they, and, and it's, it's almost still $600. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think thanks for your advice, Apple. Read, <laughs> right. Thanks, thanks. Thanks, guy. I really, I don't know. I like the idea of a of a smaller, cheaper version of it for for um uh, for schools. Not even, yeah, for schools well, and, or for me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's, I just think that Apple has to do that. I know that Apple is not one to ever introduce a discount product or a cheaper product, but it, it rubbed me the wrong way that they announced this initiative for children that is amazing. But we live in a stratus, stratified world where some people have a lot and some people don't. And if you are going to say we need to educate our kids and here's this technology that will make it better and only the people who can afford to spend six hundred dollars for their kids ipad right i mean and then a lot of people i i talked about this on twitter and a lot of people wrote back to me and said well i'm in college or i'm in graduate school and i'm studying foreign economics and my textbooks cost six hundred dollars in a semester so for me it would be right it's economical it, it, anyway it is economical but it's not for a fourth grader Right. Especially when you're in a school where they actually just give you the textbooks and you don't even have to buy them. You know, and right, you just have to wrap them in a brown paper bag to <laughs> yeah. protect them. And you just have to promise not to write in the margins, yeah. which everyone does. But and, and, and the problem with that, Apple is right. The problem with when you just give people the textbooks that you've always had is those textbooks are 15 years old. And now, yeah, and now they can Pluto be, is not a planet. Right. And they can be updated. <laughs> you know? They could be updated every year for maybe... You know, for way cheaper than yeah. it would be to buy a whole new set and of textbooks. They would be magic and fun, and kids would like to like yeah crowd around them and watch it. I'm all for it. I just think they that, need to offer subsidies. Yeah, they for need it. to make they need to be responsible about recognizing that you don't want to separate people so much. Right. Well, and you know, maybe it'll start out as a because when I saw the the event or whatever, and I know that they were showing like like a kids astronomy book and like touching whatever, but like. When I was thinking about it, I really was thinking about college and, and grad school. Yeah. Like, this is like a perfect thing for college and grad students. And maybe that's I like totally their, agree. and maybe that's like their first, like, you know, we're really pushing it for college and grad students. And if it takes off and if, and if people use it and if people are writing books for it, then maybe later they'll offer subsidies to schools or maybe, you know, they'll get rid of football and the arts to get an iPad in the classroom. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Which is, you know, they'll get rid of all the sports programs and then everybody yeah, right. can have an iPad. <laughs> that would be the day that America no longer exists. <laughs> I don't know. So I don't know. Or maybe, you know, they can get used iPads or whatever. I think, yeah. so, I, so I think you're I think, right. I think there's a lot of room. grants people can apply for, like school boards can apply for to get iPads. Right. Um, and tech enthusiast, I think that was who said it in the um, in the chat room earlier. I was like, no iPad left behind. <laughs> so <laughs> everybody can That's have funny. one. So well, yesterday, Cena did a story that they've already sold three hundred fifty thousand textbooks in three days. God. Yeah, I iPad. saw that. I mean, I they that. really huge. clean up. Like they announce anything, and it gets crazy attention. Yeah. And I mean, kids are already using their parents' iPads. Like, I, I think we've talked about this on the show before, but when you put an iPad in a child's hand, it changes everything. Kids yeah. love it. Yeah. And and they respond so great to it. So I imagine if those people who bought those textbooks are parents who own iPads and they were like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and get my kid that one about geography. Like, I actually think, I don't know if you, people who own iPads out there, one of my favorite things to do with the iPad, cause sometimes I look at it and I'm like, what do I do with you? What what are you what should I be doing with you right now? One of my absolute favorite things to do with it at a time like that is to use Google Earth. Oh, I love Google Earth. Yeah. Google I'm just obsessed with it. And so I'm from Idaho and I haven't been there in a long time and I was sad because I didn't get to go home for Christmas. Yeah. So I have <laughs> this is so pathetic. But on my on Google Earth, I have perfected the ability to from zoomed out in space in one um, move of my fingers one p long pinch out without adjusting at all <laughs> zoom directly in on my house in idaho that's pretty awesome there's a, um, awesome. there's a another app that that this is like now we're totally off the point. Actually, some Beatmaster in the chat room said, "How come you don't think of iPad first generation? The lower price with the when you know the iPad three gets released will make it more kid compatible." Which I mean, is that's true. true. But then he then or he or she, I'm not sure. Um, later says, you know, but what about? Oh no, somebody else said. Well, I don't know how to read the chat room, but anyway, will will they last? And will iBooks even work? 
on oh that was cousin of job will the uh, will the ipad one be support com- support iBooks iBooks too. Too. i'm not sure about that I, I don't remember what they said about that my only thing that i would say about that is that generally when a new generation ipad comes out the next gen doesn't get that much of a discount i mean it's right that's true it's like it's 50 not, bucks it's like 99 dollars or yeah, something which totally i mean i i don't i don't see that helping inner city schools get ipads oh but d- then people are saying that the textbooks don't even work on the first gen i have a first gen i hope they come out with a cheaper thing i can't keep i I, I don't remember what they said about that but i wouldn't be surprised if it didn't work on the first gen i, I know mean, i mean just to get me to go buy the, yeah, the exactly three. they're like kareen um, um upgrade uh, there is a really cool app, I have to say real quick. It's like an astronomy app, and you hold your iPad into the sky, and then you it shows you, like, what stars. The stars, so, uh, yeah. I know. It's really cool. And, like, you all can do that on Android phones, too. Oh. Bam! Look at us. We've got it. Oh, somebody has an app for that. <laughs> Except for that it's way God. cooler on the iPad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. So, um, all right, let's move on to... Oh, I have an itch. Let's move on to our next <laughs> rumor, which is about Casio. Who? <laughs> what? Yeah. Is that, what does that mean? How do I pronounce it? Casio? Casio. Casio? I know, because when you think of Casio, you think, think of, of little, tapes. like... Or you think of um, <laughs> the... Cal- exactly. <laughs> the um, the synthesizers. Oh, you know, yeah. Like a keyboard that's this big with the keys that big. I had one of those. And <laughs> little calculator watches. Yes. Uh huh. So that's cool. Anyway, um, a droid life tipster who Ooh. claims to have spent time. Oh, I didn't even say what the rumor was. Casio is said to be prepping a quad core handset. So Casio is really well known for like their uh, Ravine 2, which is kind of ugly, but can be submerged in 50 feet of water. Oh, yeah. And then there's the other one, which is like the L, the L zone or G zone. G zone. I can never know if it's G zone or G zone. That stupid apostrophe in it. That's all military grade, ugly, but yeah. really, they work really well. And you can like put them in antifreeze or and whatever. You can like stomp on them. They can be in an avalanche yeah, with and you, you and can... you can call your mom and be like, mom, I'm, I'm in an avalanche. Yeah. And like all the... <laughs> All the commenters in the story were like, "We're like, I don't think they're ugly. I think that they work, and I could drop them from my up here, and they'll won't break." And I I'm totally like, understand. Okay. If I was someone who worked outside and had strength and was in the elements, I would hella have totally. that. Totally. If you were in danger of being in an avalanche, <laughs> yeah. So, so anyway, so a droid life tipster who claims to have spent time in a Casio focus group because they have focus groups advises oh. that the hardware maker is readying a number of new Android products. Among them, that is a which, sweet tip, which is an unnamed device referred to as Big Boy. It's said to feature oh, a hey, super, Big Boy. super AMOLED. <laughs> <laughs> Super yes, AMOLED. AML, AMOLED <laughs> display. In the, oh, that, there's a typo in this. Oh, yeah. ty- I got to go back in there oh, and fix yeah. it later. Um, Super <laughs> AMOLED display in the range of four and a half inches or larger. The hmm. handset has a quad core huge. processor, an eight megapixel camera, a huge battery, 4G LTE connectivity, front facing two megapixel camera and nfc awesome. chip micro or nfc capability sorry micro sd card expansion slot and a curved design much like the galaxy nexus so this person also saw all these other things that day during the focus group we'll call him a he i don't know he saw a white big a big white phone some clamshell <laughs> phones he's all big white phone um, a g a g zone phone and then they asked him if like the um warranties should be longer like this guy went into this focus group with a mission he's his a spy mission was to remember everything he was like the girl for the dragon tattoo <laughs> just memorizing he's like what is that Click, 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 click. <laughs> Maybe he and, had on one of those contact lenses that had a camera. It, seriously, it, like, was this guy taking notes? Like, he left there and knew everything that there was he in this focus He also group. probably signed an agreement that said that he would not do exactly what exactly. he did. Exactly. And I bet when he left that day, he was like, I'm going to make millions. Because when somebody leaks something about the iPhone, they make millions and sell it oh, to Gizmodo oh, and make poor money. little guy. And now this guy leaves this thing and he's like, guys, I have all this news about Casio. And everybody's like... Like the guy, the synthesizer people, <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna make a new piano, <laughs> and like, and so I don't Aww. know. It's not Apple, buddy. But the like, thing is, those features sound like the best. They make it sound like the best yeah, ca- this phone of all time. Sounds like the best phone of all time. And if it can be dropped, you know, into antifreeze and like, it, 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 yeah, at fifty meters of water and stay submerged, mm-hmm. like, who wouldn't want this? I phone? would want but, that. Like, why? But what I don't understand is like. 
then it would be 10 bazillion dollars because those phones are expensive because yeah. they're so rugged and uh, other phones are expensive because they have a quad core chip and like are, have LGE and whatever and a f- like dual f- front facing camera yeah, and, and are huge all that stuff. and have a great display so this has all of that so this camera this phone will be two thousand dollars <laughs> yeah, but it's but for it's professional for the... mountaineers who want to climb Everest yeah and it's for the people in the military and p- exactly Hopefully they'll Great get a government idea. subsidy. Do Probably it, they will, and the iPad won't. Don't let this little leaker discourage you from making this <laughs> this <Little> thing. <laughs> um, I once watched a CNET focus group when we were redesigning the homepage, and we had people in to see like how they liked the homepage. This mm-hmm. was years ago, not even this most recent redesign. And it was so awesome because it was like I was in an interrogation room in a like, one-way mirror, mm-hmm. Or a one-way window, you know, where they couldn't see me, but I could see them. And they had, like, we had this tech that sees where their eyes are looking on the page. It's like, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? And they were always looking at ad, 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 ad. (laughs) (laughs) But it was pretty great. They were like, I don't know how to use this. Imagine if that person had left there and been like, hey, San Francisco Chronicle, CNET is planning a redesign. I know. They have (laughs) moved the big red ball to the left <laughs> one pixel um i used to work at a, at a university and we used to do uh, focus groups i worked in the marketing department we used to do focus groups for like oh can you get to the page where you i don't know what is that called like the view book page or like to sign for up oh, classes okay. or whatever but it was like for parents and they would like click on anything and we're and then they were like <laughs> trying to click and it was a, opened a pdf but it didn't tell you that it was a pdf and so then they were trying to click around the pdf oh, and it was so that's cute. how it sounds like it was designed it was, terribly. It was, I mean, we did it on purpose <laughs> to see like who actually, so now I'm like, uh, PDF, like PDF marking Nazi. Like you have to write that it's a PDF or people get confused. Yeah. It's very scary. That is scary. I mean, a lot of people don't understand about browsers. Like my mom, she's all over the internet. But when I say to her, mom, go to your browser and go to a web page, she's like, what does that mean? Is that what happens when I open my computer and the thing opens? Right. Yeah. And so you have to use the right terminology. <laughs> yeah. Or like when people were like Googling Facebook and then got to that <laughs> news That's story. My favorite story. So ever. there was a story that people like it was a news story about Facebook. And all the comments on com- read write web read write it's web a really hard thing all to say. <laughs> of the comments on that story about Facebook were like, "Hey, Facebook's what'd you do with Facebook? Why would you redesign Facebook? I can't log into Facebook because they thought that that was Facebook because that's how they get into Facebook by yeah, googling because it. the SEO of that story was so high that when you googled Facebook, that story came up first above Facebook. About, and so yeah. then they went to that they went to the top link like they'd always done for all those years and it was a read write web story about <laughs> how Facebook was doing something stupid and people would go to the bottom and comment and say, I'm just trying to get into Facebook. Give me my password. And then how, why do you know my password? It was doubly confusing because read white reb. God, I can't do it. <laughs> read <laughs> right trying. web. Um, had a Facebook Connect button at the bottom. Oh. So you could sign into their website using your Facebook. So oh, people and were people hitting that. And then they were, weren't, they were still just on Read Write Web. And so then they commented like, we just don't get it. They were, there was like and, 300 comments on this poor. Oh my God. I think there were thousands actually. And oh, then really? the, the um, moderator of the site wrote like, guys, this is a news article. This is not Facebook. You need to go to HTTP <laughs> colon slash slash www.facebook.com. I mean, and they were like, we don't know how to do that. And then nobody was even <laughs> reading that part. Like they put that in the story. You know. So anyway, so let's <sighs> talk. Um, let's move on to our next uh, rumor. Ruma? I'm like, what is that word? The next thing? Uh, yeah, the thing that our show's about. Um, we'll do a really quickie on this one. It won't give it the duck timer, but it'll be as though there's a duck timer. Okay. Ready? Netflix. Oh, uh-oh, Netflix is set. <laughs> That's what the headline used to be. Uh-oh, Netflix is set for an even worse 2012, according to our favorite people in the world, analysts. <laughs> <laughs> we Next love week, you, stay, analysts. Stay tuned for Analyst Corner, which is, we're going to figure that out. Netflix says its international expansion is central to its growth, growth but analysts are concerned that the company's overseas exploits could deliver a bundle of financial hurt wedbush 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 analyst michael pactor who we've we talk about michael talk all, about the time. Him all the time he's definitely going in our analyst corner totally we love michael pactor because he always talks about netflix and he talks crap about them because he hates them oh <laughs> why he's is he such a jerk he, why do you hate them so much he, michael i just think he's sorry thinks i called you a jerk i just think that i just think that he thinks that their business model is terrible it is a well-known did he's a well-known digital entertainment analyst he criticized what he sees at netflix's growth at all costs business model in a hmm. note adding that it's desire to expand 
expand internationally will only cause it to incur losses for years and years and years. And back in November, this guy, Pachter, argued that the company should be getting its financial house in order before it starts acquiring more subscribers overseas for little or no gain. So basically, here in America, the company is going crazy mm -hmm. trying to do this quickster thing losing all these That's all this done now. market yeah. but that this was back, yeah, back yeah. then you know trying to um losing all its shares losing money losing all its subscribers losing all of its subscribers and then they're like mm, you know what's a good idea right now we're gonna go to europe like this uh, is like what happens when you can't play for the nba anymore so you go overseas and play play for the NBA over there or like when you're an, a, like sure. a B lit rate actor you used to be on top and now you're not but you can still do commercials in Latvia right but it's because you like have lost all ability the reason you can't do movies in America anymore is because you've like lost all ability to act and talk <laughs> and <laughs> so <laughs> or just because you got a little fat and we here in America yeah don't and put so up with that. exactly and so it's like <laughs> you know rather than lose some weight and learn how to act they're just going to a different market. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, I don't know. Pactor has so much financial influence, though, that after he made this little prediction yesterday, Netflix's shares closed down more than 6%. Jeez. Like, I mean, so people are really but I don't understand. One this. thing I, I'm confused about is why exactly does he think it's going to lead to a loss? Is because it they can't. Because he doesn't understand why they're expanding without fixing all the problems that they have here. So they are continuing to expand this broken business model into other countries without actually fixing what's wrong with okay, it. Okay, so it's just going to be the same problems there. There, exactly. Okay. And so they're really spending, you know, and so so that's why he says growth at all costs business model. I don't think he means like financial growth necessarily, but growth. Just actual reach. Reach. Which is like what Starbucks did. When Starbucks was like, we want to be on every corner Actually, we want two on every corner. And then they were like, actually, this was a bad idea. And now we're going to close. Like three years ago, they closed. Yeah, they closed Starbuckses. a whole bunch of them. And so now you don't have to stand on a corner in downtown New York and see three Starbuckses from where yes. you're standing. <laughs> like just in, two now. In that sh in that movie, Best in Show, and she's like, um, I met my husband in uh, this Starbucks and he was in the Starbucks across the street. Oh, wait, I was in the <laughs> Starbucks across the street and he was in and I ordered a double tall macchiato. So anyway, so I mean, that's like, it's true. Yeah. So I think that what he's saying is, is that how dare Netflix just continue to go out into the wild like trying to get market share when their market share at home is really bad. I really think it's just because their tail is between their legs and they want to go abroad and have people be nice to them. Yeah, except they it's not like they can't hear what's happening over here. <laughs> they true. heard about Quickster. That's true. They know, they know what you did. Yeah, so I don't know, Netflix. Listen to me. Who's listening to Michael Pachter? Is that his name? <laughs> yeah. Pachter? He might know what it he's talking about. It could be Patched her, but I would imagine it's Pachter. I don't know. Give us a call, Michael Pactor. <laughs> yeah, let us know, Pactor, how to pronounce your name. Please let us know. All right, um, now our final, final. Oh, okay. So our final rumor is a little bit out of our comfort zone in that I don't completely understand it. And it scares me. And it's scary. Anything about this next topic freaks me out. So put your adult diapers on <laughs> so that you put don't your man pants put on. your man pants on. Get a drink. And shore yourself up for this terrifying rumor, which you probably have already heard, which is that a video claiming to be made by Anonymous, the hacktivist group, is claiming that it will attack Facebook on January 28th. Thank God. <laughs> they already made they made this claim though that they were going to do this November 7th and yes. it didn't go down. Well, so. and they and uh, Anonymous came out on November 7th and said that was not us, that was someone impersonating us, oh, really? which they've said again this time. I wonder if it's because they've failed and then they're like, "Oh, ooh, look at this scary." <laughs> you know, they're like, "Oh, ooh, that didn't work. It wasn't YouTube. us. It wasn't people of the world." <sighs> I hate it. The time has come. An online war has begun between Anonymous, the people, and the government of the United States. Guy's mask freaks while so me out. Yeah. Congress, this Although he has very nice cheekbones and a little smirk. For those in the way. Oh my god, it's that makes that gives me goosebumps. It's so, so scary. Basically, this was uploaded onto a YouTube channel that has had prior videos that were associated with Anonymous on it, but there's no guarantee that it is anonymous. And as you know, the group anonymous is anonymous, um, but it's made up of hundreds or possibly thousands of people who work together uh, to hack different groups that they decide upon. They like hacked some banks and stole some money to give to charity over Christmas. Um, and then those charities were like, please don't give us that money because then we'll have to give it back and pay a fine. So please don't do that. Um, 
But you've all heard about Anonymous last week. They went on a semi-hacking rampage. Uh, it was the largest attack, they said, ever on the internet in one day. And they took down justice.gov, a bunch of government websites, fbi.gov. They took down cbs.com, apparently, over the weekend. Um, and that was all in the name of retaliation against the FBI's arrests uh, or issuing warrants and arrests for the mega people who run Mega Upload, which was a which is a site where you can load content and stream content. Did they take all those sites down, or they just like did I think, something? I think they did take them down too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But so they're very mad. Uh, Anonymous is very mad about that because they believe in freedom on the internet, and they're very mad about SOPA and PIPA, rightfully. I mean, those and and those bills have now been postponed. Which generally, when that happens in Congress, that means they're dead. They're dead. Well, but that's we're not allowed to say they're dead yet because they're not. They're not dead yet. But, but um, Beatmaster in the uh, chat room said it was the perfect setup to get the con- to get Congress to uh, back to SOPA PIPA. So, yeah. you know, it happened right at the right time. It did. I mean, and I, I mean, I don't think there's any denying that Anonymous. So, their attacks pretty much helped because when the uh, re- representatives in the House were giving their reasons for why they had postponed SOPA, they said due to recent events, which was, <laughs> yeah. I mean, recent protests. And there were there were some physical protests on the street and people signed a lot of petitions. I signed a petition. Yeah, I'm I sure you guys it, all yeah. signed it. But also Anonymous took down a bunch of government websites and it got a huge well, amount of right. press. Well, and also Wikipedia blacked out for and that Wiki- day. Exactly. And Google blacked and Google out for that day. That, yeah, or the black bar. Yeah, and, and then stuff. you could link to information about it. Yeah, so it was big, a very big deal. But so now anonymous this video saying that it will attack Facebook, uh, and if we continue watching the video, what it says is, though Facebook has sixty thousand, at least sixty thousand servers, it can still be taken down, which I think is kind of ridiculous. A little, I mean, I, I, because. Facebook has enough servers to allow millions of people to linger on its site at once. Right. And so what the way that um, Anonymous, ha- this is the part where I don't completely understand this, but the way that Anonymous had been attacking people is by overwhelming their servers with DDoS attacks, which is like basically the equivalent of smothering a website servers so that it can't, it's not like they hacked into their password, got the code and, uploaded something from the site it's just like they overwhelmed the site so that it couldn't load and so you can't really do that to facebook because facebook is prepared for millions of people to be on it whereas justice.gov is not right because how many millions of people are lingering on that site yeah checking their why would anyone go to that site yeah exactly (laughs) there's no farmville on justice.gov just hitting like update update is something (laughs) interesting update um so and the other reason why it doesn't seem that likely that they would attack facebook is that facebook is against sopa they came out a little mark zuckerberg came out a little late against it but he came out the day that everyone was protesting that wikipedia blacked out and the google blacked out he came out saying he's completely not in support of it and it had nothing to do with mega upload so i don't really understand but maybe it's because facebook and i think this is like the problem with that people have with facebook anyway is that it's like has all your information and it's trying to sell you stuff constantly and it's like ads 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 yeah and, i mean it's so it's not necessarily a sopa related thing but it's like how facebook is taking over your i mean and maybe there people are, are just mad about there facebook. are a million reasons to hate facebook shall we enumerate them <laughs> they track you across the web they sell your information they sell what you do across the web to stores so that they can tell you what you like they tell people what kind of cat videos you watch and how long you watch them (laughs) when they change their settings so often that when you think you have set yourself to private you suddenly haven't because it defaults back and you have to be constantly checking it every time they do a redesign they also rolled out timeline which everybody hates and it's about everyone's about to be forced to take it even if you haven't upgraded to it i like it i like (laughs) it other than the fact that i find it incredibly slow and i want to do a poll to see if it's if it's slow for other people I can't find anybody's posts on there. I go and like try to look for something someone posted. It, I can't find it. Well, I know, and it's I think there's something weird about its design because it 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 asks you to use both sides of the screen. Like both, there's posts on this side, and then there's that little tiny thin line, and then there's posts on the other side. But that is where you're used to seeing ads. So my eye has like a blindness. Oh, you'll get really used to it though. Like, cause I had, I, I had timeline, like I signed up as a developer and got timeline back when they announced it and that, you, and you'll it's get... not slow for you. Cause this is my problem. Is it like mm-hmm. when I scroll down and then it's like show mo- more posts for 2011, it's like loading, loading. And then if I go to update my status from within my timeline, rather than from within the 
main page of Facebook, it's so slow that like my um, cursor flashes and it's behind my typing. Huh. It's like over. Is maybe that on? It's, it's on both of my computers. That's interesting. Yeah. I don't um, know. But then I just talked to Bridget Carey about it, or I asked her boss, talked to her about it, and Bridget said she hasn't seen that. So I don't. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you have to. Maybe, maybe I just you have, have to shift worst refresh. Computers in the world. Um, um. But so I have a source who may or may not be a hacker, who may or may not sometimes work with anonymous, who <laughs> I our own anonymous source. our own anonymous source. And I Drinking. ran this rumor by this person. Oh, yeah. We need to drink for our own anonymous source. Jeez. <laughs> I know we said tried to get up. this person to go on the record and they were like, absolutely not. Who do you think I am? Um, but I ran this anonymous rumor by them to see if Facebook is going to be attacked because that would be so sad. And this person did not believe that that was like part of anonymous's plan. This person hangs out on the anonymous's uh, forums, you know, which is where they all make their decisions, I guess. Um, but he, this person did send me some links that were like clues to what anonymous was maybe going to attack next. And I don't understand them at all. <laughs> the paste bin. I know. This was like like a string of code about what. You would need to attack, you would need to like put into your computer, blah, 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 to attack justice.gov or usa.gov. And I don't understand how to yeah, use it. I, I was, mean, it's a lot of I, things. It is. And I like, I even got flack on Twitter because the other day when they took down fbi.gov, I was like, snap, fbi.gov got penetrated by anonymous. And then my Twitter followers were like, they didn't penetrate anything, they smothered it and were so angry that I'd used the wrong nomenclature. But I don't, I'm not a hacker. Yeah, why would I don't you understand. Know? Why would little Emily know? She doesn't <laughs> like, know what the words mean. No. She just says them. No. Oh. <laughs> like, the, I have two experiences with hacking. Once, when I guessed my mom's password to get into her Amazon account to see what she was getting me for Christmas. Right, which is, like, hard, <laughs> which is hardly a oh hack. Oh, my God. It was, That's like, just her a guess. pet name. <laughs> um, and then, two, I saw the movie Hackers with Angelina. Oh, I saw which that everyone's seen. Um, it was so good. Great and movie. I have two bits of information about this. One is that yesterday, when I was in Safeway at the grocery store, I saw that Angelina is pregnant again what you just hacked that <laughs> um, and then too in that movie what i learned about hacking is that all you have to do to hack is be super hot and be a really fast typist it's true that was that movie ha hackers that's all it was yeah. was hot people typing fast. and now i am a very <laughs> fast typist people right. comment and, on that and you have to say things like triangulate the but whatever well, see that's what i don't know so what i need is someone if you want me to be a hacker if i'm ever in a situation where i'm called upon to like hack a bank or whatever someone's dying someone's gonna die unless i am able to hack something yeah they should call you because you're a very fast I'm a typist. fast typist, but what I then need is an earpiece with a hacking genius Cyrano de Bergerac who can give me all the things I'm supposed to say. We'll get the girl from the dragon tattoo to whisper politely <laughs> in your ear all the code. Maybe we should just get the girl with the dragon tattoo, period. And yeah, she can do it. totally. That'd be awesome. <laughs> all right, so we are running out of time. Okay, and we we're going to ask. Oh, well, should we just ask who Anonymous is going to attack next during the betting round? Yes. Or well, will, an, an will it attack Facebook and who do we think it will attack next? Let's not bet on who we think it'll attack okay, next. Okay, well then let's we'll, just ask that right now before we do that. Who do we think Anonymous will attack next? Please tweet us. Yeah. Send us a note. Send us an email and maybe we will uh, read it on the next show. Absolutely. For and an, do you have section. an idea? Do you think that they will attack someone next? Um, I don't know. I kind of like the idea of them attacking Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you abandoned Facebook to use Twitter, both of you. I know. I hate I hate. <laughs> Facebook now. Um, let's move on to the betting. All right. Okay. Ready? Do we have a yeah, music? Right. All right. So, uh, Emily, do you think Casio will get a quad core phone? Mm. Yes. Yes. I say no. Is the next iPad going to have a Retina display? Yes. I say yes. Is Instagram going to come to Windows before it comes to Android? Yes. <laughs> I say yes. Um, let's make it interesting. I say no. Um, is Netflix going to shoot itself in the foot and have a really bad 2012 because it's going into the European and abroad? I think it's going to have a bad 2012. Yes. Um, I say yes, too. Will Ano Anonymous attack Facebook next? No. I say no. 
but I want them to. <laughs> Oops. I just got that. And that is one quick is way how... to get your your account deleted. Yeah. No, but this is actually how Anonymous gets their orders. It's actually through Kareen. Yeah, I'm like, do she it. She suddenly is like, attack Facebook next, boys. Do it. Or girls. Um, all right, should we play our voicemails? Do we have time oh, to yeah, play yeah, let's our do voicemails? We got, all a, right. we got a minute. We can do this. Okay, cool. Okay. We've got two voicemails over the last couple of weeks. And the first cool. one comes to us from Kale from South Carolina, who says he knows how to make a Chrome OS tablet. Hey, guys. This is Kale from South Carolina. Uh, I, I just want to say that I'm a huge fan of the show. I've been a huge fan Aww. of the uh, you're, You guys are so hilarious. Aww. I absolutely love Tuesdays because it's... <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I want so to say cute. is from show number 13, you were talking about the Chrome OS tablet. I had a quick three-step guide on how to make a Chrome tablet. And it works with any Android or iOS tablet, even the $99 HP touchpad. So first, number one, get a tablet with an internet browser. Step two, lost <laughs> every internet single browser. Time. Step three, never close the internet browser. <laughs> there you go. There you, you go. Got your Chrome OS. That's a Chromebook. <laughs> Similar to the Chrome OS. Thanks, guys. Absolutely love the show. Bye. Aw, so thank nice. You so much thank for you, calling. Kale. All right. Want, let's play. Let's play this next one. Too. Okay. This, oh gosh. This next one. You want to set it up? So remember how we said we were going to have? Is this the analyst one? Yeah. Remember how we said we were going to have analysts corner? That's because we are best friends with all the analysts. So much so, in fact, that they call us on the phone. Yeah. So as you know, I. I called analyst Gene Munster of Piper Jaffrey, who likes to talk about Apple, a tall drink of water. Because he's super handsome. He is super handsome, and he's super knowledgeable. And then he called us. Hi, this is Gene Munster calling from Piper Jaffrey, um, calling for Kareen and Emily. Um, I understand I was invited to call you uh, uh, for personal reasons. Um, I've been trying to call numerous times, and I use the number I was given. Um, there's no way to forward a message to you or talk to you personally. I must say I don't like to be teased, and I would have <laughs> talked to you if I could have. Um, unfortunately, uh, the number I have is a voicemail and not your personal number. Um, this is it. Goodbye. Well, Gene so, Munster. Because we had said, we had said, Piper, uh, Gene Munster is a tall drink of water. Call us. And we didn't even say that, though. No, no, we did. We went, call us. Just we like did? that. Oh, maybe we did. <laughs> I thought we looked, I thought we rolled back the tape and it turned out that we never said that. Anyway, so we called this guy back. Yeah, so we were like, is that possibly actually Gene Munster? <laughs> if so, really awesome. mad at us? Do you want to be on the show? <laughs> yeah. So we called him back, exactly. And we got a church. So, and she had no idea. She <laughs> had no. The, the lady had no idea who Gene Munster was, unfortunately, because he's so handsome. Yeah, we're like, hi, can we talk to Gene? Gene Munster, and the woman was like, "You've reached the first bap like Baptist Church of Iowa." Yeah, uh, and so Gene Munster's not here. Don't mess with us, Gene Munster, because <laughs> we have yeah. we have caller ID. Yeah, and <laughs> we can heard call of you star sixty nine. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. Please don't play with our emotions. Please don't. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Stop teasing us, Gene Munster. Well, so people in the in the um, in the chat room were asking, Gene Munster is religious. I mean, what we really think is that that, that was not Gene Munster. Yeah, we got a prank call yeah, from a church. Yeah, we got a prank call, and we thought Gene Munster loved us, but really, Gene Munster does not watch him or has it. Much to my chagrin. Yeah, I mean, I'm and shocked. Much, much to my yeah, exactly. My big surprise: Gene Munster does not watch the show. As he should, because yeah. we, all we do is throw him compliments left and right. Yeah, and also, I mean, I think he could get some good advice from us. We're like, this is how we think the iPad's going to go. This is what we think. Yeah, Gene Munster Generally, told us. Generally, we're citing him, <laughs> yeah. but, you know. Just so I think I think we really should work on, a, um, or some, I think it was Sparkman. Somebody in the chat room said that we should do analyst, hot or not. <laughs> no, <laughs> I idea. think that's a good way for us to get fired. <laughs> yeah, totally. But we should do an analyst corner. We definitely and are. Maybe we can, like, add, like, a little subhead about whether they're attractive or not <laughs> and um but we are going to track whether or not they get it right and we're going to revisit them what they're saying and we're going to yeah. get to know them a little bit so we're going to work on because we have these two analysts that we talk about all the time michael pactor and gene monster yeah i don't so know maybe are we'll there have others like a fight between them are there others there are definite spike says it was me i don't know spike was it, spike? <laughs> was it? <laughs> we'll have to do some voice uh, uh, yeah. recognition software yeah. call us and then we'll compare all right guys thank you so much for watching we're overtime 
Crave is coming up next. I'm sure they're like banging on the door. We will see you next week. Bye. And have a great week. See you next week. Thank Bye. you. Bye.